In this episode, we'll be looking at Python's XML parsing modules. Specifically, we'll be looking at the mini-DOM module and the element tree module. Let's start with mini-DOM. And to really begin, we need to look at some XML. So, here's a very simple piece of XML I made a long time ago. Basically, it's an appointment XML, and it stores a beginning time, a UUID type thing. Basically, it's a U a unique identifier. What time I should show an alarm for the reminder. The state of the reminder, it's been dismissed or snoozed or closed or whatever. Location, where I should be, duration of the time, uh, of the reminder, and the silly subject which happens to be bringing pizza. Alright, so now we can look at the mini DOM example. This one's actually fairly complex, but it's based on one directly from the Python um, documentation. So let's just go over it a little bit. So you import XML DOM dot mini DOM, and then you have to do a lot of extra stuff. So let's go to the bottom because this kind of shows you what's going on. So here we're going to, going to create call our class with the XML file and just create an instance of that class. And then we're going to call that class's appointment list. So let's go up here and take a look at that. Appointment list happens to be just a list. So we have to look at how this all works. We have your initializer and we have self.handle.xml so it's going to take the XML that we pass to it and do something. So let's see how this works. First we get the XML. If it happens to be a URL, we're going to download it. In this case, it's not. So we just grab it. We parse it using various nodes in the XML library. And if it's the kind of node that we want, then we return it. And at the very end, we get some XML out and then we can call self.handle XML. This is where we get into the nitty gritty. It'll actually go through by a tag name and get like the Z appointments one that we were looking at earlier. And then it'll gra go inside of that and get the appointment. And then it'll call, finally, after it gets that list of appointments, it'll pass it to your handle appointments. And here's where we get to the fun part. So we go through each appointment in the XML and call the handle appointment method. And in that, we pull out each piece out of the tag using its tag name and append it to our list. So basically, we're creating kind of a list of lists here. This create adds everything to it. If everything's good to go, there aren't any exceptions, then we append it to the appointment list. So basically, we're creating a, a little mini list inside of here. It is created new through in each loop. Add each item and then add it to the master list that we end up using down here that we print out. So that's kind of how that works, and it's all kind of convoluted and a mess. So I really don't recommend using mini DOM all that much unless you have to use the DOM module. Ma, have to use the DOM model for some reason at your work. If you don't, then we can quickly move on to the element tree, which is much easier to understand. So let's do that next. To begin our element tree adventures, we're going to look at how to parse the same set of XML that we did with mini-DOM using the element tree module instead. So here's how the basics of how you would do it. You would just import XML etree.cElementTree as et. And technically, you can actually import just regular element tree, but the reason that we're going to use the, the C element tree is that it's a little bit faster to use. It's um, based in C instead of Python base, which is what the element tree is, so it's just a lot faster to use. Anyway, so as you can see, it's very similar. We pass in an XML file, but it's a lot easier to read. So you get a tree out of the XML, basically, it reads it for you by you passing it to the element tree function, or class in this case. Then you can print out the root and 
grab the root and then gra gra grab the tags and attributes from that root. And then each child in the root, you can go through and just grab the tag and attribute from it and print them out if you want to. And then, of course, you can iterate over the entire tree of the XML file using element tree. That's what all this does. We should actually try this out and see how it works so you can kind of see what it's going to print. So let's give that a try. Alright, so we'll just go up here and run our module. As you can see, it goes through and iterates over each part of the tree. We get the apartment, begin, UID information, and just prints out each part of it, which is really, really handy. And then you go through each child and you can actually find out what those elements actually hold for values. And in my opinion, that code is just a lot easier to read than the mini DOM. It's more Pythonic and just simpler. So, in other words, I just think it's a lot easier to use. In a future uh, lecture or episode, I'll be talking about how to use an, a module called LXML, which is not included with Python. And it, adds, it kind of follows the element tree model, but it's even more advanced and even easier to use than element tree, at least in my opinion. And let's take some time to see if we can actually create the XML using element tree. All right, so I'm going to show you some code I, yeah, I created. And basically, we still import element tree as usual. In this case, we have a create XML function. And then we just need to create a read element, which will be the Z appointments, an actual appointment element, append the appointment element to the root. And then we will need to create sub elements underneath the actual appointment. And that's what we're doing here. So underneath appointment, we want a begin element, UID, alarm time, etc., etc., etc. So that's what all of these do. And you use dot text to actually set the value of the elements. And then at the very end, we create our tree using element tree with the root that we created earlier. And then we just create the file and write it out to disk. And if you run this code, you'll actually end up with, a, with some XML that looks so very much like the XML we saw at the very beginning. At this point, I believe that you can use MiniDOM to parse XML, and you can use the element tree module to create and parse XML as well. I personally prefer element tree, but you know, your, mile, your mileage may vary, and you can choose whichever one you feel more comfortable with. I'll see you next time, and thanks again for watching.